very good morning to you and welcome to Super Screens News at 10. We're broadcasting to you from Lagos State, Nigeria. I am Olamide Onka. Many thanks for joining us. And we'll begin with this story where the president, Mohamed Buhari, has written the Senate on its readiness to reimburse Delta and Taraba State money spent on executing projects on behalf of the federal government. This was contained in a letter which was read on the floor of the Red Chamber by Senate President Bukola Saraki, the phone. 601 billion naira. While the Federal Executive Council approved the total sum of 78,601,631,430 naira 16 kobo as reimbursement to Delta and Taraba state governments, the National Assembly approved 90,236,461,031 naira 36 kobo, which is higher than the amount approved by the Federal Executive Council. The Senate may note the provisions of the Public Procurement Act 2007, which empowers the Bureau of Public Procurement to approve vendors and contract sums. The amounts presented to the National Assembly for approval were duly certified for reimbursement by the Bureau of Public Procurement before they were approved by the Federal Executive Council. Meanwhile, the federal government shall proceed with implementation by reimbursing the amounts approved by the Federal Executive Council. The president urged the legislature to reconsider reimbursements to Bauchi and Kogi State, as also approved by the Federal Executive Council. In other news, the Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs has raised concern over an impending threat of closure of over 70 Nigerian foreign missions across the country. The followers' revelations by the ministry at its 2019 budget defense before the committee that only 4 billion naira has been proposed as funding for about 110 foreign missions across the globe. The committee members frowned at the appalling work in the environment. are almost non existent. Nigeria has the resources to fund its embassies. You cannot claim to be the giant of Africa and then your diplomats are moving around the world as beggars. You people come here every year in the last four years. You don't speak the truth about your own people that are suffering because you are civil servants. We only read it on the pages of newspaper. And then your diplomats that you send out of this country, they go there, they suffer. This is an ongoing debate about closing of missions. I, I agree completely with the permanent secretary because I'm sure there is a reason why or reasons why uh, Nigeria in the first place decided to open some of these missions. And uh, we have up to 130. The world is getting more complicated. And there are challenges everywhere. So it is not what, 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 what happened a few years ago, why the missions, the number of missions got increased to 110. I think the 110 uh, yes, uh, is getting more complicated. Instead of expand, uh, the, the contrasting, I think it is better for us to expand. What is important is for us to uh, understand how do we fund these missions? Responding, the permanent secretary in the ministry, Mustafa Suleiman, confirmed that merely 30 missions will be properly funded with the proposed sum. Uh, presently, um, the president approved the setting up of a committee to look at how to fund the missions and the ministry. Listen, listen. There's a committee that is working uh, in that light. And this committee is supposed to conclude uh, by end of the week, comprising Ministry of Finance, Central Bank, Accountant General, and the Ministry. Uh, all the issues raised by the distinguished senator is actually um, appreciated by the government. And the government appreciates also that it's going to be very difficult to fund the MFA through the normal budgetary process. So the committee has met several times. Actually, the report has been prepared as to how best to address the funding issues of the mission. 
The total budget proposal for 2019, which is over 73 billion naira, is 9.688 billion naira, less than the 2018 appropriation for the ministries. And now, the worried by the recent allegations of gruesome murder of 32-year-old Colade Johnson, alleged to have been murdered at a viewing center by the federal anti-robbery squad attached to the Lagos State Command, some concerned alumni of the University of Benin at those state have taken to the State Police Command in solidarity rally over his death. The allegators who disclosed that they were at the command to demand justice says the time is ripe to put an end to a series of extrajudicial killings without justice with total reformation of the unit. The constitutional responsibility of the police is to maintain law and order, to arrest offenders, not to kill innocent persons. We want to send a clear signal to the Nigerian police that the youths are not sleeping. We want to send a clear signal to the Special General of Police, to the Commissioner of Police, that wants SAS to be abrogated in total. Just on Sunday, one of us, Colonel Johnson, in the bid to exercise his love and passion for football, went outside the words the Liverpool versus Paul Man but on Sunday evening and in the normal reading process of the so-called task, this young innocent promising Nigeria was shot dead. Let us say that on this note, we are condemning in totality whatsoever the Nigerian stars think they have done to our brother. Can you just carry the gun oh. that we handed over to you to protect us? Hey. You use that same gun to kill us. Yes, my my man. Man. Sir, maybe you are not among the policemen oh. that stand on the road. Jesus. But you can see live footage of what happens on the express road daily. In reaction, the state police commander, DSP Chidi Mwabuzo, said the case is under investigation. Well, on behalf of Edo State Police Command, now that you visited us, is a great honor and regard. You know, coming to tell us about what happened to you and what the, how you feel. I want to appeal to you to be calm. The police force is handling the matter. I understand that uh, one, one of you mentioned about the room trial. It's one of the uh, process in Nigerian police force in which we process hiring officers who had gone out of their way, out of their professional way, to do crime. So I believe that once they are done without, the officers will be on their own. In other news, the Cardinal State Police Command says there was a fierce battle between the police and armed men at about 5.40 a.m., leading to the death of three armed men. He said the armed men entered the Mother Cat Coal Company in Mando area of Kaduna State, shooting sporadically and shot two policemen on guard. Addressing journalists after the incident, the CP owner Sunday said one of his men, AP number 161126, Inspector Bijimi Mayaki, who was injured and rushed to 44 Army Reference Hospital for treatment, died while receiving treatment. this morning following an incident that occurred today, Wednesday, 3rd of April 2019, at about 0540 hours, when some armed men entered the Mother Cat Company at Mondo area, shooting sporadically and attacking policemen on guard duty. The gallant policemen engaged the hoodlums in a fierce gun battle. They repealed the attack and in the process gone down three of them. During the fire gun duel, two of our men, AP number 161126, Inspector Bijimi Meyaki and force number 251990, Sergeant Kabiru Shuaibu, attached to Ops Yaki sustained injuries and were rushed to 44 Army Reference Hospital for treatment. However, 
the NCO, that is Inspector Sergeant Kabiru Shuaibu, died while receiving treatment. DCP Sunday also used the opportunity to call on the attention of well many Nigerians to always assist the police with credible information that will lead to the arrest of criminals in the society. Normal glass. The normal glass. And if you look at it like this, it is covered. This is uh, to blindfold a victim. And when they blindfold the victim and the victim is going along with them, maybe they are tied in back. Passers by would not know what is happening because if you look at victim, is just putting on a space. But you don't know that the space has blindfolded the victim going where they are taking it. Therefore, this is normally the uh, tactics of uh, kidnappers. Exhibits recovered from the hoodlums are four AK-47 rifles, eight magazines with 130 live ammunition, five pieces of suspected improvised explosive device, and a golf wagon vehicle with registered number W812FET. And now a service of song has been held for late retired Deputy Inspector General of Police and the founder of Jesus Family Ministries Church, Archbishop Christopher Akiwe, Omeben. At the service of songs, families, friends and loved ones described him as an epitome of selflessness. That Bible reading set the tone for the service of song of late retired Deputy Inspector General of Police and founder of Jesus Family Ministry Worldwide, Archbishop Christopher Akigwe Omeben. While the minister encouraged all present not to mourn but celebrate his glorious exit, his first son, amongst other children, described their late father as an epitome of humility who renders selfless service to humanity. Today, our father has suffered. In fact, I met him for the first time in 1986. And since then, when he was in service, I went to talk to one day. And I was there before he had an And as I was in office, it's a uh, second they were all asking the question, and I was hearing that do, 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 and they are high. In those days, I don't wear shoes, I wear t shirt clothes, I wear all these You know the second thing now, we don't wear shirts, we don't wear When you saw me, you want to live as a man, let it come inside. That's the end thing of his. Uh, uh, his special in life essentially was to make this life, I mean, make the world a better place. And uh, he brought that principle to bear both in his work as a policeman and even as uh, when he eventually declared to, be, uh, to become uh, fully engaged in the ministry. As you know, uh, he was the Archbishop of his church, Jesus Family Ministries Church. His life was an epitome of humility service, dedication, honesty, forthrightness, and that, those are the qualities he bestowed upon us, his children. My dad is a very selfless human being. Um, he's very outspoken. Um, he's very intelligent. Um, he's very straightforward as well. Um, I really love him because he's a wonderful person. He's an amazing human being. Um, he's really got a good sense of humor. And um, he's just normally he's just a kind loving human being 
for his friends, families, and other loved ones, a late Archbishop of Meben will be greatly missed and that his legacies will continue to live on. Archbishop Christopher Higby of Meben is um, a father to many. He's more than a spiritual father to me. He, I've been under his tutelage uh, over 30 years. Um, he's a man of various parts. A gentleman and officer, he's a man of humility, a man of deep insight and knowledge. He was an inspiring figure in the church and to his community at home. And in Nigeria as a whole, we all knew what he did. He was not a rich man because he did not put his hand into the tilt of the government. He lived a simple life all through his lifetime and is an example of what it is to serve the country. I will miss his fatherly care and his very humble nature. And his, I, will, I don't know, say, maybe I say youthfulness because he behaves beyond. We just say, Peter Piper, how are you? And we start talking. And I'm one of his confinants in life. There's no secret in life he cannot tell me. on to the grave beyond, but um, for me, he has joined the angels. So I have an, an additional guardian angel there. Um, I was the first bishop that was ordained by him in the ministry. Uh, he mentored me. He was my coach. He was my spiritual father. So I, I greatly would miss him. He left quite a lot of legacies. The children are there. Those of us who are close to him, who are young, we never forget all those lessons that impact on us. Christopher Aikigbe Omeben was called to glory on February 9, 2019. He is survived by his wife, children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, brothers, sisters, and many spiritual children. Super screen prays that his gentle soul rest in perfect peace. Adenike Wege Ajibwe, Super Screen News. You're watching Super Screens News at 10. We'll take a break at this time. When we return, it'll be time for some stories emanating from the business world. Stay with us. Welcome back to Super Screens News at 10. And now for some stories on the business world. The Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, says it is targeting to generate about 750 billion naira from about 55,000 millionaire tax debtors. Executive Chairman Chude Fala, who disclosed this to journalists in Abuja, said about 55,000 people in recent submission exercise carried out by the service led to the recovery of 23.25 billion naira. He said from the bank account substitution exercise, they used banking information to bring non-compliant taxpayers with 1 billion naira and above turnover to comply, resulting in the recovery of 23.35 billion naira. The executive chairman stressed that the expectations of Nigerians could not be different if progress in VAT collection is not sustained. And now the federal government has been advised to tackle housing deficit in the country as a way to reduce unemployment and brain drain. A mortgage expert, Kingsley Theophilos, gave the advice in an interview with Super Screen Television in Lagos State. The more you allow the housing deficit to continue, number one, you are robbing the economy of the contribution of the housing sector. In other countries, that are developed, that are doing well, the housing sector plays a significant role in the gross domestic product of that country. But in Nigeria, the contribution of the housing sector is very decimal, you know, very low. Then, not only that, you have people that are the professionals there that are, are not doing well, and then you have the mortgage banks that are not 
operating at their optimum because they don't have phone they don't have long-term funds and of course you have the citizens that are not happy because you can't tell me a graduate that is working and he can't afford a good house a man that is married with children he can't afford a good house he will not be happy and when you have a high number of the citizens not happy of course that country will not be happy and then you are talking about brain drain people want to go out to see where they can get good jobs and get good housing programs. Again, there's this issue of uh, inconsistency in government programs. And when you have a change in leadership, that pro uh, project or program is jettisoned, does not help in the issue of housing, you know, addressing the needs of the housing uh, uh, deficit. Theophilus also highlights policies the federal government can put in place to bridge the housing deficit gap. There's need for us to check the the cost of fund there's need for the government to come up with a housing fund you see i've been canvassing it we have a, a house you have a fund for the electricity companies we have a fund for aviation we have a fund for other areas there's this anchor program for farmers and all that but what funding has government put in place for housing when you are talking about 17 or 15 or whatever figure housing deficit there's need for cbn to come up with a housing fund and of course there's need for the government to urgently recapitalize the federal mortgage bank so that the mortgage bank federal mortgage bank can drive the the, the mortgage market in nigeria so if you put these things in place in addition to other factors the housing deficit will begin to reduce In other business news, the Nigeria Tobacco Control Alliance has challenged the 8th National Assembly to approve the DARF Bill on National Tobacco Control Regulation as a legacy the 8th Assembly can break at Nigerian masses. Speaking during a peaceful rally to the National Assembly in Abuja, Program Coordinator of the NTCA, Olushin Wesson, said the act was a legacy left by the 7th National Assembly and signed into law in the twilight of the last administration on May 28, 2015. The 7th Assembly passed a bill to law which was the Nigeria Tobacco Control Act of 2015. And since the passage of that law, not too much has been done as regards the implementation of that very important law because there is um, a provision there that means that the Federal Ministry of Health has to draw tobacco control regulations for the country and that regulation has to come back to the National Assembly for approval before it could be implemented. And so four years down the line, the regulation is here back in the National Assembly. So it is in the National Assembly as we speak. And we need the National Assembly to start to stand on the part of Nigerian people, to stand with the Nigerian people, I mean, to pass the Nigeria Tobacco Control Regulation. It is not too late. It can still be done. And it's a legacy that the Eighth Assembly can leave for the Nigerian people. And the Nigerian people will always be better for it. Other stakeholders at the protest also called on the House of Representatives and the Senate to consider the regulations and approve it with all without delay. Well, today we are calling the attention of both houses of the National Assembly, particularly the leadership of the Senate and that of the House of Representatives, to the fact that they need to give us the National Tobacco Control Regulation as a public health legacy. The regulations are before both houses for approval and this, house, this session of the National Assembly will come to an end in June. So we think because of the importance of the regulation, in rolling back tobacco addiction, the diseases, deaths, and economic costs associated with smoking. That this eighth session of the National Assembly has a responsibility of, a, of approving these regulations and we will forever thank them for giving us a public health legacy. You're watching Super Screens News at 10. We'll take another break at this time and when we return, it'll be time for some stories on the foreign scene and sport. Stay with us.